Good morning. Welcome. It's good to have folks in worship in this house this morning, as well as those online in your home. We're all in the Lord's house, and we're enjoying a little bit of dusting of snow outside. If you'd like to get some exercise outside and in the snow, then Terry has put some of these nice little crafty snowmen all along the trail, Lisa's trail, and so we invite you to enjoy those. Those will be out there for at least a month or so, right? Maybe a little bit longer. So uh, go out there and enjoy that. I would also remind you that tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and we want to celebrate the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. as well as continue his work, his dream, for a country where we are judged not by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character and for justice and equality for all. There is this afternoon a special uh, online discussion uh, and the information for it is found on our website, on the homepage of the website, or you can look up uh, Lafayette Pastors Alliance. It is from four to six today. And then many people will be doing days of service tomorrow or during the week. So that's something you can do. So, uh, and we also want to lift up uh, this need in our, in our nation, in our world today. So we invite everyone into uh, prayers for that as well as service. With that, I'd like to begin worship. And again, we're delighted to have you with us in worship. Our call to worship this morning is found in Psalm 27. And it is up on the screen here. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord. I remain confident of this. Wait for the Lord. God is good. All the time. Praise the Lord. We invite you to join in worship in music.
Good morning, good morning. Come on up front if you want to. Yep, you can if you feel comfortable. Yeah. How are you this morning? Good. Well, and um, if you want, you can sit right in front of me because I'll have you help me. Does that sound good? I'll have you sit right on the floor there. Thank you, sir. What we're going to do this morning is we are going to talk about what we have been talking about, which was, is the nativity. And when you think of the nativity, or whether that nativity is your nativity at home, or grandma and grandpa's, or at church, our beautiful nativity that we had out front by the kitchenette is so beautiful. And when we set up our nativity, a lot of times we start with, Joseph and Mary, baby Jesus. That's how we think about our nativity, right? And then what we have been talking about lately, too, is we've talked about all the beautiful things and the messages that the angel came to us and said. And then we also talked about the animals in the nativity manger and also the role of the donkey. So we're setting up our nativity with those characters. And last week, we loved the message, the wonderful message of what the shepherds, the three shepherds did. They were God's messengers after Jesus was born. That's how everyone found out about him. Well, this morning, we have some more characters that God picked. Because God picked each one of these persons or animals to make his story beautiful and amazing. So the next characters that we're going to talk about and the roles that they played are the three kings. Now, I don't know about you, but when you put your nativity together or your manger together, sometimes people will take their three kings that they have and they won't put them inside the manger because the story says that the three kings weren't there the morning of Jesus' birth or even the next day. They actually came to see Jesus a year or two later when Jesus wasn't in the manger. So we are going to put our kings clear over here to the east because that's where they came from. Now, the kings had heard the story, because of the shepherds, that a baby Jesus was born and the Savior of the world. And remember, everyone had been praying so very, very hard for that Savior to come. And they believed in that. So, they went, and this is going to be our King Herod, they went to King Herod to see if they knew where to find the king of the Jews. And guess what? Herod, when they asked him about where Jesus would be, he got a little jealous. And he pretended and acted like he really wanted them to find him. So he told the kings, if you find him, I will worship him too. But I think he was crossing his fingers behind his back because that's not really how he felt. So, in the Bible, it says that there were probably a lot of kings. Not just the three kings, but a lot of kings because they all wanted to know. And they went to Herod. Now, when Herod asked them to go find the king of the Jews, they wanted to do that task. They wanted to see for themselves if the story was true. So off they went. And all the kings went to Bethlehem. Now how do you think that they knew where to find Jesus? Well, this is part of the story too, that God made sure that he gave them a beacon of light. And that's the star, like the star we're seeing here, the star of Bethlehem. 
Now, one of these kings loved to study the stars in astrology. So he was looking to that wonderful great star that shined over Bethlehem still for a year or two after Jesus was born. And that's what took him to Bethlehem. Now, when they got to Bethlehem, baby Jesus wasn't in the manger, was he? He actually was almost one or two. So he was talking and walking. And when they found him, he was in a house. And they were so excited. And they praised Jesus. And they bowed to Jesus and got down on their knees. And just like these kings right here, they gave Jesus three gifts. And those three gifts that they gave, we will talk about later. But the amazing part is they treated him and a young toddler like a king. Now that night, when the kings were going to go to sleep, they went to sleep. And while they were sleeping, God came to them in their dreams. And God had said and warned them not to go back to Herod but to go a different direction. Do not let Herod know that Jesus is in Bethlehem because Herod wanted to kill Jesus because he wanted to be the only king. So I think that that's why we probably call our three kings wise men because they listened to God. They listened to God, and they did not want King Herod to kill Jesus. So what they did was they got on their camels, and all of them, we'll put our kings in all different directions, the kings all split up and went different directions so that Herod would not know where Jesus was. Now, Joseph also went to bed and he also had a dream and that dream was from God as well. God had told Joseph that that was going to be Herod's goal was to kill his son. So Joseph listened to God as well and worked to get Mary and Jesus and himself out of Bethlehem and they fled to Egypt. So our story today about our three kings that I love so much is that God picked the kings. Kings that he knew would want to go to Jesus and want to be happy that Jesus was the savior of the world. And he knew that the kings would also listen to him and save Jesus from Herod. And that's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what we, they did. They followed the star that God placed in the sky and that guided them to the Savior. And they listened and obeyed God and God's plan. So blessed be the kings, our wise men, our wise kings. Let us all pray. Dear Lord, Help us to listen to God's plan, to always be wise when we are trying to hear his voice and what he's calling us to do. And thank you, Lord, for the kings that saved Jesus. Amen. Welcome again, and thank you, Tamara, 
And thank you, Stephen, and others, for sharing your gifts and talents with us this morning that we all, may all worship God together. We continue our series, Planting Seeds of Faith, and this morning we're looking at Believing the Best for a New Year. And we are in Luke chapter 13, verses 6 through 9. And this is Jesus' parable of the barren fig tree. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit for this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I am digging around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, then you can cut it down. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts and minds this morning. Well, as I said, we're looking for, at believing the best for a new year. Love the story of this farmer who was driving down the road with a truckload of manure he was going to use for fertilizer, and this little boy came running out the road and yelled to the farmer what he had in the truck. Manure! The farmer replied, and the little boy said, what are you going to use it for? And the farmer said, I'm going to put it on strawberries. The little boy thought for a moment, he said, you ought to live here, we put sugar and cream on ours. <laughs> Well, you know, the truth is, in life, sometimes we have to endure the manure in order to get to the strawberries. Are you with me? And uh, there's a lot of truth in that, I think. And it's interesting because I think there's a perspective that we need to persevere. This is the time in January where a lot of folks have, of course, made their goals and resolutions for the new year. I don't know if you are a person that makes goals and resolutions both my daughter and I do actually take them on our, on our mirrors, and we're still looking, working on some of those sharpening for the new year. But it's interesting because more than half of Americans make goals and resolutions for the new year. But do you know that fully one-third of them have already given up on them by February the 1st? More than one-third have given up on their resolutions and new goals by February the 1st because they get discouraged, they don't persevere. I also think that for a lot of us, you know, we were really looking forward to 2021 for the new year. Am I right? I mean, having endured the pandemic, we're not over with it yet, but we're really looking forward to a new year. And many of us put up our Christmas decorations early, and then we get into 2021, and, and many of us have been heartbroken by the scenes of violence at our nation's capital uh, a couple weeks ago. And so we're already discouraged a little bit. Are you, are you with me? A lot of discouragement going around, but I think there's a lesson, some lessons for us in this parable for this new year about being able to believe the best for a new year. And so I invite you to walk back into the story this morning. And so Jesus is telling this story, and the story goes of this um, owner of a vineyard who is with the master gardener, and they're probably touring uh, the vineyard, and they come to a fig tree, and the fig tree is not bearing figs. And the owner turns to the gardener and says, listen, this fig tree is just using up the soil. It's not bore fruit for three years now. we got to cut it down. And it's an interesting lesson because I think what the vineyard guy is saying is that if it doesn't grow, it's got to go. If it doesn't grow, it's got to go. And it's interesting because the first thing we learn is that this, the fig tree is actually a symbol in the ancient Near East of blessing and abundance. And they would put fig trees out in the vineyard, even though most of it was about grapes, and it was just sort of something that was extra, it was a blessing, it was abundance, and the symbol of that. This fig tree had been there for some time, and we were given sort of the setting that everything must be fine with the soil, right? The problem is not in the soil, because everything around this fig tree is bearing fruit, the problem is in the fig tree itself. Anyone besides me sometimes have difficulty realizing that you might be part of the problem? <laughs> Anyone? Okay, so uh, it's interesting. So, and it's interesting too that when you look at this, the owner wants to take stock for a moment, right? And so the first thing to realize, in addition to the fact that the soil is fine, is that the sign is in the leaves that there's no fruit, 
but the problem is elsewhere. It's actually in its root. And so what the gardener says is, no, listen, I'll tell you what. Let it go for another year. Give it another year, and let me do something new. Did you hear what I just said? Let me try something new. Anyone have trouble doing something new, right? As individuals and families and, oh yeah, as a church, trying something new. And so the gardener says he's going to do two things. And the first thing is he's going to dig around the roots, right? He's going to dig around the roots. Now you probably know if you're a farmer or even just sort of living in the farm area that you need to dig up the ground in order for anything to grow really well. Okay, and, and Gary and other of our farmers say, tell me that once the corn starts to grow, the beans, they actually uh, run the combine or tractor down there and they have a, a blade that goes down the ground and goes right down uh, the middle of the row. And what it does is cut the roots so the roots will grow deeper. And so we need to break up the soil so the roots will grow deeper. Now, something about breaking up the soil is that it can be painful, right? Has anyone in their life ever had God sort of dig around the roots? Right? Some digging, maybe there's some relationship issues, maybe there's something in the past, or maybe your just spiritual life has gotten sort of hardened, right? Against the workings of the Spirit, and so God begins to dig that up. Now, there's lots of ways that God can dig up the roots in our life so that they start to grow more, but mostly it involves some, you know, sometimes some hurt and some heartbreak or just some humbling process, right? Has anyone besides me ever had the ground, the soil broken up? around your roots. It's not an easy thing. Sometimes it's, it's painful. Sometimes it's discouraging. But we need to persevere because God has bigger and better plans for us. Now I want you to notice that the second thing that the gardener does in just digging around the roots is he puts a manure on it. Now if you thought it was bad to have your soil broken up around the roots, how about putting some manure on this? Now if you read the King James Version, it says dump, right? Now you know out here in Indiana and elsewhere, that if you drive down the road, sometimes in the spring or summer, you can smell when farmers are fertilizing, right? Now, to, to most of us, that smells awful. But uh, Gary, one of our farmers, went like this this morning out in the congregation, right? Because he knows that the manure spreading is part of what it takes to get the crop to really grow. In our own lives, and I was thinking about that, I was thinking that sometimes you need to endure the manure in order to mature. Okay? I'm going to say that again. Sometimes you need to endure the manure in order to mature. Sometimes God brings some really smelly manure things into our life so that we can grow. Now, we don't understand exactly how that works, but we, knew, we do know that God works for, through adversity and difficulty in our lives in amazing ways. In fact, it says that all things work together for the good of those that love God, who've been called according to His purpose. So let me ask you today, in your own life, first of all, to take stock of your life, are you growing spiritually and personally and relationally the way you'd like to? If not, maybe you need to allow the gardener to do some digging around the roots. Maybe you need to have some wisdom to allow some of those smelly things, those stinky things into your life, that God is actually working in those things, and there's spiritual maturity, and eventually fruit will come if you endure and you persevere. Now, it, it's not easy, right? I mean, none of us likes to have the ground around our roots broken up, things that sort of uh, humble us, things that break us, things that sometimes even break our hearts, and none of us like the stinky, smelly things that happen in life. But if we have a long-term perspective that God is at work, we can realize that God is going to bring fruit and maturity from that. Now think for a moment about some of the stories that, that I, I love. How many people know that Michael Jackson was cut from his high school basketball team? How, how would you like to be that coach to cut Michael Jackson from the basketball team? But he didn't allow that sort of breaking up of the roots or that smelly thing that happened in his life to stop him. He persevered and went on to be a star player in college and obviously in the NBA. Edison uh, tried more than 9,000 different filaments before he found the right one for the electric light bulb. Someone once came to Edison and was interviewing him and he had not yet discovered that right filament. They said, what does it feel like to have tried 9,000 things and failed? 
And then it said, I haven't failed 9,000 times. I've found 9,000 things that don't work and eliminated them so I can find the right one. If we have the perspective to persevere, then God can do good things in our life. Beethoven, Ludwig van Beethoven, right? Great composer, great musician. His first piano teacher said he was a hopeless failure. Can you imagine that? Beethoven. So what do you need to persevere through? What do you need to endure through? You may be discouraged and disheartened by the new year, but realize that God can be at work, and sometimes when God is at work, we can bear fruit in amazing ways. I mentioned that tomorrow is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. He had a great dream, overcome in great adversity. He was even willing to give his life for a better world, a better America, a better dream that we would not be judged by the color of our skin, but by the content of our character. We've accomplished a lot, but there's still more to do. But we need to endure, we need to persevere, we need to believe in a better tomorrow. Our nation has gone through there's a lot of heartbreak and unrest, uh, a lot of disrespect, disharmony, but we need to come together. We need to respect each other, to listen to each other, to unite and work towards peace and justice for all, and to listen again with respect for our neighbors, to believe in a better tomorrow. There's a story that I love, a true story, about Ranch Ricky. Ranch Ricky was, uh, way back in the day, uh, the general manager for the Brooklyn Dodgers when the Dodgers were still in Brooklyn. He did a, a lot of innovative things in his life and in his career. He was actually both a football coach and a, a baseball coach. But when he was the general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, he was the one who really instituted spring training, which has become an institution today. He also was the one that, that uh, made it a regular habit for players to wear the batting helmet to protect them, both the batting cage and then later actually in the game. And then one of the things that he did was he's largely credited with beginning to break down the racial barrier in Major League Baseball because he's the one who hired Jackie Robinson to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. It was a really controversial thing at the time. He not only hired him, but he sort of coached him along the way and provided some mentors for people to provide a pathway for him that changed the course of history in many respects. He lived a great life and he became a motivational speaker. He was a person with a very deep faith. At 82 years old, he was in St. Louis, because he was also the general manager for uh, St. Louis for a while, he was doing a, a dinner, a sports banquet dinner, and a reporter came up to him and said, Mr. Ritchie, with all the things that you've accomplished in life at age 82, what was your greatest thrill in life? And Branch Ricky thought for a moment, he said, you know, son, my greatest thrill hasn't happened yet. What a great perspective in life. At 82, to accomplish all those things and to be able to say, my greatest thrill hasn't happened happened yet. What I want to say to all of us is if you're a little discouraged already in the new year, maybe God is at work. And we just need to believe that we need to maybe get through the manure to get to the strawberries in life. That sometimes God has to break up the ground around our roots for us to grow more. Sometimes God has to put some manure in our life. But God is working so that we can grow. We need to take action, but we need to give it time for things to happen. I want to close with this thought. Remember the first Easter morning and Mary was at the empty tomb and the disciples came running and the disciples went back to get the other disciples and Mary was left alone outside the empty tomb. And all of a sudden the risen Lord appears to Mary, but Mary didn't recognize Jesus. Who did she think he was? The gardener. The gardener. And she said, Sir, where have you taken my Lord? And Jesus said, Mary, Mary. And in that moment, Mary recognized the risen Lord. And Jesus commissioned her to become the first evangelist with the good news to go and tell the disciples that she had seen, that she had witnessed the risen Lord. Now, many times people will say, Well, you know, Mary mistook. Jesus for the gardener. How should you do that? With the sunlight, baby, and everything. But what if Mary was more right than wrong? What if Jesus is the gardener? What if in our own lives 
Jesus, the master gardener, is in fact working on our life, that we can bear more fruit, that we can grow. That Jesus is digging up the roots, digging up the soil around our roots so that the roots will grow deeper. And Jesus is sometimes applying the manure. After it is, our risen Lord went through all kinds of manure on this side of eternity before he went to the crucifixion and the resurrection. And so if the risen Lord took the greatest tragedy of the cross and turned it into the greatest triumph, then there's nothing in our life that God can't bring us through that can bring growth. And God can do amazing things. And so today, even as Jesus, the master gardener, bid Mary to look forward towards the future, to new growth, that Jesus was going before her, so too the master gardener can work in our life through all the adversity, if we're willing to trust, if we're willing to persevere, that God is at work digging up the soil around the roots, applying a little manure when needed, but knowing that all things God is working so that our life will be better, that God has a plan and purpose for our life, and God has the power to see us through, to believe in a better future. We join me in prayer. Lord, some of us are already discouraged in the new year for some of the things that we've endured or we've seen around us. But help us to have faith, to realize that you are indeed at work in our lives. And sometimes the breaking up may be painful in the soil around us, but you're at work so that our roots can grow deeper. And sometimes the things that happen in life are frankly just a little bit smelly. But your work, fertilizing our life, that we can grow and bear fruit. So Lord, in this new year, help us to trust you. Help us to persevere that in all things you're working for the good. We pray this in your name and all God's people said. So we want to lift her up in prayer. And she also has a neighbor who needs prayer. Bruce Ratliff continues to need our prayers. And uh, then also Pat uh, Shoemaker Wells needs our prayers, as does Pastor Ron once. We've also had people who lost loved ones. Uh, we obviously, we, this week we uh, gave thanks for and celebrated the life of Jake Weaver, what we want to continue to remember Mary Ann in our prayers. Also the family of Norma Cree, and then Ashley Luzader, who lost a grandparent, we want to continue to lift her up, and then uh, we want to continue to lift up our nation in prayer for healing and, and being able to find peace and uh, be reunited together. So uh, there's lots more uh, prayer requests that we have, but we just ask you to take a few moments in silent prayer and then join together in united prayer.
Lord, thank you so much that we have the privilege of stepping aside from some of the busyness and even noisiness of our world and to come to your house or just before you in worship and to lean into your grace and your strength and your love. Even amid some of the adversity of life, we forget to give thanks for the blessings. But we do thank you for the beauty of creation around us, the gift of life itself and the gifts and talents you've blessed us with, the gifts of country and community, of family and friends, and our church family. We're so thankful that Christ came to share our life, our very human weakness and frailties and wrapped his arms of love and grace around us and then gave his life on Calvary that we would know forgiveness and grace and was raised to new life that we would know the power of the resurrection and the promise of eternal life so Lord help us to open our hearts and lives to your amazing grace and love today Help us to trust you and to see us through all of life. But we also lay at your feet the burdens that we have and our sisters and brothers have as well. We lift up those who've lost loved ones and pray that your peace that transcends all understanding would touch their hearts today and in the days ahead. But we lift up those who need a healing touch, whether at the hospital or nursing home or in their homes. Continue to bless the medical folks who are caring for them. But we also pray that you, our great physician, would touch and strengthen them in body, mind, and spirit with your healing presence. We pray for all of us, Lord, that you give us the strength and vision to love and serve you and to love and serve our neighbor. We lift up our nation. We pray for healing, for understanding and respect. We pray for a new president we will inaugurate this week in Joe Biden. We pray for wisdom and grace and understanding for all of our leaders that we as a nation may move forward. We pray for our community, Lord, that we would rejoice in all those around us and work together. We pray for this day and tomorrow when we think about Martin Luther King Jr. and the legacy that he leaves and the dream that he's instilled in all of us. Pray a blessing on that dream and our participation in it. We pray for all people, all places, that they would come to know the good news of your saving grace in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
and Almighty God, the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, and the peace and power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God bless you, and have a great week. Thank you.